One section that's important um, to note in the needs assessment is to figure out your community's profile. So who are the people that you'll be educating or doing the virtual presentation on? Are they young? Are they old? Are they, uh, you know, teenagers? So figure out the age, figure out the gender as well. That could be important. How many students or how many people will you be educating? Be mindful of the diversity because um, uh, you could be working with uh, a diverse group of people. And then accommodations. Are there any special need individuals? Are there um, individuals that are uh, that may need extra, you know, uh, help during the presentation? So look at look into accommodations geographical area where are they located exactly that's important to know is it in a fluoridated area is it in a non-fluoridated area um, when you do your needs assessment you'll learn about their social economic status and then figure out if there's any language barriers will you need a translator uh, to help out with the um, presentation so i know most of you or all of you guys are very um you know you guys know about the diversity and know that it's very important that um, we respect and we, uh, we respect all cultural backgrounds and we develop caring and respectful relationships with them. Okay, so that is pretty self-explanatory. Now, what's really important is that before you, or just when you're starting your presentation, you always want to start with an icebreaker. And an icebreaker is very important because it provides a positive uh, momentum for the presentation. It creates a, a positive group atmosphere, actually. It helps break down, it helps people relax, it'll help you even relax as well, and it'll break down any social barriers. Now, given that this is virtual, I know this could be uh, challenging, but there are many different ways we could offer ice, uh, virtual icebreakers, and we're going to actually look at some of them. Now, when we're selecting an icebreaker as and I'm going to provide you a list of the various different icebreakers you could use. Make sure you choose one that is suitable to the age group. So in the past, when um, some students went to a long-term care facility, they used bingo as an icebreaker because the seniors at that, in that facility loved bingo. Um, if you are teaching you know, young kids, choose an icebreaker that is suitable for them. And of course, um, the icebreaker may need to be modified because we are doing it virtually. So here is a, um, there are some lists over here of po potential icebreakers you could use. I, it, I encourage you to also do your own research and find virtual classroom icebreakers that could be done. Um, and as one of the discussion board question is, I want you to see what type of, uh, you know, come up with an example of a virtual icebreaker that you possibly could use in your virtual presentation. And always reflect, make sure that you, um, once you've chosen one, reflect and see whether this would be great for your audience. Um, so, you know, bingo is a great example for, for seniors, but maybe not so much for kids. Or it could be if you, um, you know, simplify it for kids. There are so many different ones that are out there. But think about why you selected this icebreaker. And then after you're done your presentation, you can always go back and reflect and see whether that icebreaker was a good choice or maybe next time you would change it around. Okay, but always have an icebreaker with, uh, for your presentation. And when you're doing your presentation, make sure you want to uh, make sure you motivate your students and doing so. Like, how can you motivate your students? Well, there are many different ways. You don't want to lecture the entire time. You want to break it up by asking questions, um, by having activities for them to do. So um, keep them motivated that way, because when you do, it will inspire them to learn. They'll be more interested. It won't be as bo as boring, boring, right? So uh, the main goal over here is um, don't lecture the entire time. Break it up by asking questions, by um, having activities for them to do, that sort of stuff. Lastly, I want you guys to think about how you will be presenting your information. Will you be using Zoom? Will you be using Microsoft Teams? Will you be using WebEx? At Georgian College, we have access to these two. We do not have access to the, um, you know, the full version of Zoom. So this may not be an option unless you have your own, uh, unless you have access to it from a different source. But Georgian College does provide access to this. And with this, with, I know with WebEx, you can definitely record if you needed to record.
What's also important is that um, once you have your presentation completed, please arrange a time and date with me because I want to do a trial run. I want to make sure that we don't run into any technological issues. I want to make sure that the, um, you know, the icebreaker that you have uh, selected works for your age group. I want to make sure that if you guys are doing any questions such as like Kahoot, Poll Everywhere, um, there's so many different apps that are out there, which I do encourage you to use. Let's try that out from before so that when you actually do your presentation, there are less issues uh, that you run into or hopefully no issues that you run into. So please uh, send me an email with a time with several times and dates and I can let you know which one works best uh, for me. All right. Thanks, guys.